guys! It's David and Kendra here in Vietnam. And today's video is going to be about taxi scams in Vietnam. We're sad to say it, but we've been hit by quite a few of them since we've been here. About 50% of the time, I would say. We have a very um, nice, honest ride, and then the other 50%, they're charging double, triple the rates, and we'll tell you about our experiences now. So when we arrived in Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam, we mostly took grabs. Uh, Grab is like the Uber of Asia, and it's super easy and cheap to get around that way. But every now and then, grabs are hard to find um, due to peak hours, or they're just too far from you, or you just... We had one time where we just couldn't find our driver who was waiting for us. So sometimes it's just nice to lift your hand and get a passing taxi. So we did that when we were trying to get to a show and it worked well. The ride was only like 40,000 dong, which is a reasonable price to pay for like a five to 10 minute ride. And when we were leaving the show, there was a taxi there waiting. So we're like, okay, that's easy. Let's just get in this taxi instead of calling a grab and waiting for, you know, five minutes trying to wait for the driver to arrive. So we did that and it was a five minute ride, but he wanted to charge us 185 dong, which is way too much. It should have only been 40. So he went way too far up on the price and even the meter said 184, which is just ridiculous. So we argued with him and I swear I gave him 500 dong. I swear. I was new to the country, so I could be wrong. I, I won't. It was dark, and who knows? I swear I gave him 500 dong, though, and he gave me 20 back, meaning that he was trying to say that I only gave him 20 when I gave him 500. On top of that, he was saying that we still owed for the ride, so he was like taking 700 dong from us, 700,000. So I can't be too sure about whether he did the whole slip of the hand, change your money thing. It's so possible that he did. Either way, it was either a, a, a $180,000 ride or it was a $700,000 ride. Either way, the five minute ride was way too expensive and it really left a bad taste in our mouth for taxi drivers in Vietnam. So we get over it. It's like, even if it was a $25 five minute ride, we'll survive. I felt that, first of all, I know, I know Kendra's personality. I know her integrity. I know that I feel like 100% that she gave him what she thought she gave him, first of all. Secondly, um, if there was a mistake made, it could have been easily corrected. But I felt like, this guy really was out to cheat us. Big time. Already. But, I mean, before we got into his cab, he, he knew what he was going to do. And he was so, at a tourist stop waiting for a tourist to come, and we present ourselves, yeah. and we were just yeah. prime prey. So that's, that's what I'm saying. So what I'm, what I'm thinking of, you know, in hindsight, 2020, what I'm thinking of now is that we're making this video right now so that you won't be in a position to where you're upset, you're not thinking, and you're not, you're not calm enough to know what, to, what next steps you should take. Because I was upset, and I was like, this guy <laughs> is trying, really trying to rip us off, and this is crazy, and I'm about to lose my mind here. So, in that kind of situation, you know, it, you forget the details, you forget things that you should be doing. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna name a couple of things that you should do in that situation, and we're gonna tell you about some other experiences. First thing I think you should do in that situation, take a picture of the driver. Put your phone out, take a picture of that driver right then and there. Also, inside that cab and outside that cab, there's very specific numbers you should take a picture of. Take a picture of the ID of the cab, take a picture of the tag, 
take a picture of the company. Because there's a whole slew, there's hundreds of cabs. Yeah, there's at least five or six different companies. And every city has, um, there's some national brands, but every city has its own companies as well. So it, if you just get the picture of the outside of the car and see which company it is, you can call and complain afterward, which can, we'll tell you later, but it really does work. <laughs> Right, and, and with that, that's why I'm saying also get the ID numbers of the car because some drivers drive different cars, some drivers have different tags. Uh, for the most part, most companies are consistent with who drives what cars and when. But if you know the time and the date of when this incident happened, you also have the ID numbers and the tag, that's going to go a long way. Then on top of that, if you happen to have taken a picture of the actual driver, that's hard to deny. Mm -hmm. And the next city we went to was Da Nang, which is lovely, a beach town. And um, for there, we, we tried to learn our lesson <laughs> and we tried to use Grab wherever we went. But we went up to Lady Buddha, which is a little bit isolated in the hills, and we couldn't get a Grab back. So we had to take a taxi. Um, but having the Grab app really helped us because we knew about what the right rate should be, so we could negotiate the price, which was helpful. So the driver, he started at 500 dong of wanting us to pay for our next ride. But the Grab app said it should only be a $200,000 ride. So I'm like, okay, so now we have some negotiating power. So, and I don't mind paying a little bit extra for, you know, having the driver we got the rate down to 250 and it was nicer to just get in the taxi and go than having to wait for who knows how long for the grab to arrive because there was no drivers in our area at the time so it could have took five minutes for a driver to come on or it could have took an hour who knows we just paid the extra 50,000 so we could be on our way in the taxi and I am perfectly okay with doing the flat rate like that sometimes the taxis won't turn on the meters but if we negotiate the price in front on before we get in the car and i pay you and that's it i'm cool because we were in agreement the next time <laughs> though is we were in the city Hui. So we got off the bus, and again, taxi drivers are waiting to take advantage of you. And we get into the taxi, it has a meter. We're like, okay, we'll just pay the meter. He never starts the meter, and he drives off. And as he drives, he's saying, it won't be any more than 150 maximum. And we're like, what are you talking about? The meter will tell us what it's going to... He's like, no, it won't be more than 150. And we, it was a five-minute ride, people. Remember, five-minute ride is supposed to be about thirty to $40,000. Uh, so David is livid. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, this is the third time now. It was like three strikes. Three strikes, dude. It happens in every city. It's 50% like, of the time. No. It happens a lot. Okay. okay. First of all, okay. In my defense, <laughs> I'm, I'm heated right now. I'm really, really smoking right now. And so this guy, he doesn't look at me. He's looking at Kendra the whole time. He's not looking at me because I'm, 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 I'm really fuming. So I was like, no. You know, when we, when we arrived... And Ken just pulling out the money, and I was like, "How much are you paying him?" And he was, and she was like, "Too much, way too much, <laughs> way too much." And I looked at her, and I looked at him, and he's looking away because he doesn't want to look at me because I'm really about to go upside the guy's head or something. So I say, "You know what?" So I turned and I walked into the hotel, and I here's the thing also too with me: I know I don't know your language, and you partially know mine. And you know something's wrong. So I said, okay, I'm going to go inside. I went inside the hotel. I got one of the, the receptionists to come with me. And I said, this guy's overcharging us. And I'm not going for it. 
I said, it's not right. And she starts speaking to him in his language. And she's like, no, this isn't right. So she's in agreement with us. And so he starts coming down on his price because he knew he was in the wrong. So he went from 150 to 100 and we just went ahead and pay it. Still too much money. It should only be like a 40,000 max 50,000 with tip um, ride. Anyway, it's out of our lives. But he's telling the receptionist at the same time, like he shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't use this company. I wanna make sure you don't use this company in the future. Well, lo and behold, two days later, <laughs> the man's, uh, the owner of the taxi company and the driver comes to our hotel with this cake, people, with this cake as an apology for what happened. <laughs> so David Lucas is single-handedly changing the taxi scam culture and play Vietnam right now. <laughs> Well, what I want to say about that, it was really a friendly gesture that he came. Yes, that's um, true. Um, so we, there's hope, people. There's, there's hope. hope. It was a friendly <laughs> gesture that he came. I had to collect myself before I went down to the receptionist <laughs> to talk to these folks. But when we got down there, the guy was very humble. He offered us all of our money back. We and didn't take we it, didn't, though. We didn't cause... take it because we, we believe that we should pay a fair rate. Yes. In whatever city, whatever country we're in, we believe in paying a fair rate. We don't believe in cutting anybody short. We don't want, and this is the reason I'm not mentioning any names of any taxi companies or anyone else, because we don't want to hurt anyone. Our travel is not about that. But at the same time, I don't think that travelers should be taken advantage of. I don't think we are, we should be targets or marks for everyone to take advantage of. Because all that does, is upset us and ruin our time and right we're and trying it ruins to have a great time. it ruins their business because it's so easy for grab to come in and steal all of their business because grab is honest right and a lot of the countries we've been to really hate grab because they're losing business so i think kind of uh, by exposing these taxi scams and trying to get it to stop in a way hopefully people will trust them more because it, it hurts the whole city if people don't t trust taxis because then they're not getting any income they're not getting any business yeah the travel industry is based on it, it's based on the word of mouth it's based on the feel of the city it's based on the people it's based on the culture and the food but you don't want someone robbing the system. You don't want someone taking advantage of something that's very beautiful and it's already there. So, you know, but my point is, the point of making this video is that I think we should start taking the proper measures. Because in our incidences, we saw where we made mistakes. We, we made mistakes by not doing our due diligence. You can be upset, but if you don't take out your phone, capture that that picture, capture those images, capture those numbers, then you're just as much at fault because you were upset and you weren't thinking, then you didn't you didn't take the measures that you should take. To prevent it from happening to other to, people. To other people. In the future. It may happen to you, but it will prevent other people from going through that. Why? Because once you do that, it's hard for in these countries it's hard for certain certain people to get these jobs. But once you, once you prove to that company that this person is dishonest, they take that very seriously. Because As we it, see with this cake. <laughs> they take it very seriously. If I hadn't accepted that guy's apology today, I don't think he would have had a job after, after that situation today. I really don't. So I humbly accepted the guy's apology. I didn't accept his money. But here's the thing. If he makes a mistake and loses his livelihood over it, He's got to deal with that, okay? But I think that we need to stop making the mistakes. I think we need to start taking it seriously instead of just getting mad and walking away in a huff. I think we need to start taking it seriously, taking those license plate numbers and saying, you're not gonna, you know what, you're not going to mess this up for everybody. Yeah, and that happened a third time here in Hue as well. And 
so we were in another uh, non-touristy area, more secluded, um, away from getting taxis. So we saw a taxi, I think he was like on lunch break even. And we're like, can you take us to our hotel? And again, he didn't want to turn on the meter. But at the very least, he said it's going to be a hundred thousand dong. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. He's going to overcharge us, but I'm agreeing to it because he's the only taxi for a mile. <laughs> so I'm just going to be overcharged and get to my hotel. Well, he didn't take me to the hotel door. And, okay, he dropped us literally two minutes away and he told us to walk down the aisle to get to our hotel. But I'm like... You're not going to overcharge me and not take me to the hotel door at the same time. I'm particular like that. It's completely ridiculous on my part, I know. It's like, I can't have you do me wrong two times. You can do me wrong once, but not twice. Anyway, so I make a fuss about it. <laughs> but he still wouldn't take us to the hotel door. So Dave, that's when David took the picture of the guy's car. And he's like, no pictures, no pictures. We're like, whatever, we're gone. Here's your 100,000 dog. Have a good day. Have a good life. But we got back up to our hotel room, and I get a phone call from the receptionist saying that your driver, he just refunded you 50,000 dog for your ride. And we're just like, oh, crap. <laughs> so he felt guilty. Or he was scared that we were going to report it and he did the right thing and refunded us the proper amount. So, just all of that to let you know, if you're not too angry and you have the presence of mind, just try to remember, take those pictures and report it. Take pictures and report it and maybe it will happen just a little bit less. We got results reporting it, and they're taking it very seriously. They're apologizing. They want tourists to come. They want you to enjoy your time. They want you to enjoy their country. And they really are working on it. So hopefully by the time you get here, no more taxi scams. But if you come and you experience it, try to report it. Don't yeah. let it slide. Don't let it slide. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to say with that is this. The country is very beautiful. It's very welcoming. The people are amazing. Uh, the staff here at our hotel has been superb. Everybody's treated us like kings. We while love it we, here. While, while we've been here. We really love it here. Uh, we mention these things because we want it to be that you enjoy. Like us, we're traveling for a long time. We want you to enjoy these experiences. You know, we don't want, you know, it taking away, but also the travel is a community. It's a community of travelers. Not everybody travels, but there's a community of us traveling around, and we want everybody to share a beautiful experience, and that's that's what we're about. So, mm -hmm. so that's our experience with the taxi scams in Vietnam. We hope one day it will not be an issue, and this video will be obsolete. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button so you can get more travel videos like this every week. Until next time, happy travels guys! Bye!